My name is Jose Lee Miners, and I am assistant professor of instruction at the University of Texas at Austin, in the Department of Spanish and Portuguese. And together with Flavia, who is going to introduce herself in a minute, we are the co-project directors for the Texas Coalition for Heritage Spanish, also known as TEX. So I will let Flavia introduce herself and then we will get started. Wonderful. Thank you, Joseli. Uh, my name is Flavia Belpoliti. I'm Associate Professor of Spanish at Texas and AM at Commerce in the Department of Literature and Languages. And I joined uh, the CORAL project a few years ago, and we started working with the text model. And today we will want to showcase what have been doing in the past uh, in the past years. And this is our main um, we'll say a uh, mission statement, uh, reduce building communities because that's what we want to do. So to begin, uh, we have a uh, short outline for our presentation. Uh, we have like an, a snapshot of the Hispanic population in Texas regarding demography, Spanish use and uh, heritage language education to see what's going on in our context, which is the state of Texas. Then we'll talk about the Texas background and why we started this coalition. Then uh, we'll continue talking about the mission statement and the main goals and how we're working to fulfill them. And then we'll see how Tex really belongs to COEL and what's the importance of open resources and open education for everyone, particularly for uh, minority populations in the US. And then we will dedicate some, some minutes to uh, basically see what we have been building in our website. And we have like, I mean, this kind of a tour with different, uh, different aspects of our, of our project. And finally, we'll talk a little bit about the next years, what we plan to do. And of course, um, we're open for, for questions or comments. So to begin with this uh, snapshot, um, these are uh, basically, data from the um, 2020 census and there are several uh, factors that are impacting the growing population of Texas, but particularly the growing of Hispanic population. As you can see the comparison in this uh, small table, uh, the overall population increased in the past 10 years about 16%, which is a large, large, um, large increase. However, if we consider only Hispanic population, we'll see that the increase is 21%. So two points above the general population's uh, growth. And in the map, you can see distribution. We have the historical areas where Hispanics have always been, been basically living there, which is across the border. But as you can see, there are more and more counties where the Hispanic population is above 10, 15, 25%. So far, we only identified five counties, very small counties on the east side of Texas that had less than 5%, but they're really small counties. So basically, uh, we can consider that in Texas, Hispanic are distributed across, across all, all, all the geographies. And on the second table, you can see a little bit about the population diversity. Even when Mexico and Mexican people or people from Mexican origin is still the majority when about 85%, uh, there have been some changes overall and we see an increased number of people coming from diverse areas. So I, we believe that basically Hispanic population is diversifying in, in the state. Uh, considering education, we see that, I mean, there is still some progress to be made regarding how many people from Hispanic background really achieve higher education levels. Um, basically regarding poverty levels, which is always a point of discussion, particularly in political campaigns, uh, we can see that 80% are above the uh, poverty level. So it's just 20% or about 20% were below. That was means that the Hispanic population is doing, is doing fine in that sense. So let's talk a little bit about what's happening with uh, the language, what happened with the Spanish in, in Texas. Um, if we consider only, uh, and these are responses from the census 2020. If we consider only those people that are um, older than five years old and they answer the question about whether the languages that they speak at home, we will notice that um, most people in Texas will speak English. It's about 64, uh, 65 percent. 
And other languages that are not English nor Spanish, we see that they are about 6, 6.5%. But finally, Spanish, we see that uh, growing numbers, if we compare 2010 with 2018, is using Spanish at home with above 29% of the total population of Texas, meaning that we have really a, an important Hispanic, Spanish speaking community here. And just to have like a kind of comparison, if you see these uh, monolingual or traditionally monolingual countries where Spanish is the official language, we can see that Texas has more Spanish speaking uh, population than Paraguay, Nicaragua, Panama, Puerto Rico, Uruguay, Costa Rica, El Salvador. So we're talking about a large uh, Spanish speaking uh, population here. However, and this is for us one of the focus that Tex uh, has been working with, we found out that really um, the education of Spanish English bilinguals in the K-12 system in Texas is really not strong. And basically we are lacking support. And here you have some of the main reasons. And basically there is a lack of Spanish and bilingual education teachers overall in all areas of the state. Um, there is not a clear framework for uh, heritage Spanish, where we have so are basically a framework for Spanish as a second language, and that as it is is not uh, enough for the needs of our uh, Hispanic students. Um, and then we know that most Hispanic students are basically enrolled in ESL programs, and those are very short, short-lived. They basically have pull out two or three years after two or three years, or they have very early exit programs. So most of them didn't finish their, uh, their ESL uh, projects uh, correctly. Of course, there is a limited budget uh, dedicated to languages in Texas. And finally, and this is for us a point, that, a point of contention um, for the Texas Education Agency, Knowing a language that is not English, knowing a different language, basically is a educational disadvantage. And this monoglossic ideology permeates the state education across the board. So basically you have here the direct quote and the idea of that having more than one language that disadvantages is really, uh, is really problematic if we want to continue to grow bilingualism and multi multilingualism. What happened then in uh, higher education? We did a very short um, project on, on, on seeing what's going on with the universities and colleges across the state. And um, basically we revised um, for two years, most of the catalogs as they were listed in each institution. And we select basically Spanish for heritage speakers, Spanish for Hispanic students, and Spanish for native speakers. Those are the three uh, common uh, name for the classes dedicated to heritage Spanish in these institutions. Overall, out of the 71 uh, colleges that we revised, only um, half, we can say 53%, uh, offer some kind of Spanish classes. Um, in average, we notice that there are only two classes, those dedicated to the so-called intermediate level, uh, and they vary by institution, of course. And there are some mm, interesting exceptions here. We have University of Houston, UT Rio Grande Valley, and uh, University of Texas at Austin, UT, where they are offering four to five classes in, in each program. So there are some institutions that are dedicating more resources to, to this kind of education. And also we found out that just a few private institutions are offering heritage Spanish for their students. Also as another um, alarming fact that we are using orange to, to mark those, uh, in 2017, when Tex started, actually, the Texas Educational Board eliminated languages such as Spanish, French, German, and others from the core curriculum, and that has had a strong impact in higher level um, uh, language education. Considering all these factors and these and these particular issues, um, we, I mean, and when we see we is basically. Uh, a group of uh, instructors and professors in, in colleges and, and universities 
we start discussing the need to create some kind of association or coalition to basically work with this particular niche that Texas has. And as you can see, I mean, and we just saw in the previous slides, uh, there are issues from population growth and the particular needs of Hispanics in, in the state, then uh, the lack of support for uh, LOT education, um, the low percentage of Hispanic students that finish college level classes, and uh, also the fact that most of us work alone in our own institutions. We create in, or have large initiatives, we are creating new classes, new materials, but mostly we tended to work by ourselves. So the idea of the coalition came out from, from these, these particular needs and we started talking informally and then in 2017, it became a reality because we actually found a uh, Texas uh, text. So, and now Joselle is going to continue with um, basically the mission statement and our goals. Thank you, Flavia. So I, I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about what text is all about, what our mission is, our goals. So first of all, our mission statement is to seek uh, and to provide a cooperative platform to support the success of Spanish heritage language speakers and their communities in Texas, assisting and promoting bicultural and bilingual development in the state. And so right now we have uh, representatives from uh, maybe it's about 10 to 12 universities around Texas. And we are always looking to grow and make more connections. But basically we have people who have already well-established heritage Spanish programs, or at least courses, one at least one course, and who have experience with trying to get the program started, advocating for the program, teaching the types of classes, creating materials. Because if we're all working in similar programs, we should be collaborating. So then I'm in the next slide, I'm going to talk to you about some of our goals. And we have a lot of different ones, but here are a few. So first we wanna be a, flat, a platform for sharing ideas, data and resources to advance the objectives of diverse ASHL programs. Like I said, we have different types of populations and institutions and needs, but we wanna share the ideas that uh, could be helpful for all of us. We wanna design and disseminate effective procedures to create, redesign and evaluate SHL programs at all educational levels. So we really try to encompass from K through 12 and higher education. Right now, the members of TEX are all university uh, professors for the most part, but we, our goal is to expand and include people from community colleges, high school, middle school, et cetera. We want to help inform policymaking bodies on issues that relate to SHL education in the state. And that's why the research that Flavia mentioned about looking at the numbers and the policies and the support that uh, SHL education is receiving in Texas is so important. We want to actively support community-led initiatives, creating pathways to better connect Hispanic organizations with educational institutions and to establish connections with other state associations to create more comprehensive frameworks for Spanish language education in Texas. So we're all about building bridges and communication between different entities who all support our mission. Okay, so in the next slide, I'm gonna tell you about the relationship between Tex and CORAL. So as you know, Tex is a part of CORAL, the Center for Open Educational Resources and Language Learning. And we realized that it's really a perfect fit. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit about why. So we have an issue here that as Flavia was showing, the population is growing, the need for the population of Hispanics and heritage learners, the need for these courses, for Spanish uh, courses for heritage speakers keeps growing and resources to teach these courses and training for instructors to teach the classes as well at all levels from uh, K to 12 and higher ed. And so a lot of times instructors at all levels have a hard time finding a textbook or resources to teach these courses. As we know, there is no one size fits all textbook, especially for this type of population, not just in the state, but if you think about it and the national level, our populations of heritage learners are so different. If you see, for example, the students who are learning Spanish as a heritage language in Texas and you compare with Florida, then the Northeast, California, they all have different needs because it's 
based on the reasons why the families immigrated, how much education they've had, the parents had, and how much Spanish is being actually spoken at home, et cetera. And even within Texas, there's large differences. So it's really, you have to do whatever fits the needs of your particular student population. And the instructors are constantly creating materials for their students. And so if everybody is creating materials for their students, why not just share, right? And so how do we share through open educational resources? That's why this is a great solution. Because if you're working on um, a textbook that or activities that you're using for your class, I could very easily use your resources, adapt them to my needs, to my student population, instead of reinventing the wheel, we can all keep sharing. So uh, one of the goals for text is to promote the creation and sharing of OER for SHL. And something that is really interesting is that students can be involved in the creation of OER as well. This promotes student agency. This movement of open pedagogy is growing and particularly the students who grew up with Spanish at home, they come already to the classroom with such a great wealth of background in um, cultural knowledge and linguistic knowledge that they could really use to, to help create OER for other courses, other purposes. So on our website, you can find many examples of OER that have been created by instructors and some even with student support as well. And so now is the time when uh, we wanna point out the website and uh, the, here, there's a number right here that says it's more than 1100 people who have joined the text community. So Every time somebody joins one of our webinars, comes to our workshops, we add them to the community. And it, I think now Flavia is gonna open up the website so we can show you some of the resources we have there. And we're constantly looking for more people to contribute and promoting all the resources we have to share. Okay, so this is our website and this is the welcome page. And one of the one of the things we have is a forum where people can come and ask questions. This is a way to do some networking and reach out to other people. If you have uh, an issue where you're trying to start a program in your school or district, then other people can help you, give you advice, talk about their experience. So you can sign up and be able to post and receive notifications when somebody posts on the on the forum. I don't know what else you want to focus on, Flavia, since you uh, are. I think that we can. I mean, we have so many different type of materials, and we're basically working on a redesign of the website so it's more user friendly. At this point, it takes a little while to, to find everything, but uh, we've been collecting for five years wonderful materials from uh, all over the United States, not only presenters and people working here in Texas. So if you visit the instructor resources, can I don't know if you can follow, yeah. Yeah, maybe you can look at uh, the textbooks and show one of the mm -hmm. newest ones, which is Janina and Esteban's yeah. open, open source textbook from so if you visit Exactly. If you visit instructional resources, you can find all the different, I mean, uh, kind of materials that we've been sharing under this level. And in here we have open textbooks, which is, I think, one of the most attractive uh, component of our website is the direct connection with, I mean, different textbooks created for professors in Texas and outside as well uh, for specifically for Spanish as a heritage language. So um, the one that we have here is um, the latest one is Reflexiones sobre nuestra lengua by two of our colleagues who are part of TEX, Janine Hernandez and Jose Esteban Hernandez. And let me open the site so you can see uh, how, to, how it looks. And this is the entry point. And then you have Lere Libro, and then you can continue unit by unit with the different uh, materials. And it's a wonderful project. They started working with it, I think, five years ago, four years ago, and finally it was published last, last year here in our site. Um, other resources that you can find in, in this particular tab is our um, workshop information. We have materials for the different webinars and workshops that we run across, I mean, through the year. 
and there are both the videos in the PowerPoint slides and extra materials that the presenters share with everyone. And there are different, different approaches to teaching Spanish as a heritage language, making different kinds of connections, focusing in diverse, um, very different, I mean, aspects of, 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 of this, of this uh, kind of teaching. And I think um, before, before we move on, you should show that, yes, the, the modules. Yeah, another, another project that is um, in progress is the professional development models. Those are based in the workshops that we uh, did since uh, 2017 on summers. We had all the materials and the videos and we started creating different, um, different um, actually models that people that have no experience or want to refresh their knowledge can visit and, and follow. And so far we have five and we're building up another five this, uh, this spring semester. We hope to have them published by, by the end of, of May. Then we have classroom resources. And again, in here you will find many different activities, small projects, uh, full projects, uh, multimedia that have been used by different instructors for different levels uh, of education with a diverse population, though, so they're open and anyone can basically download the materials and start um, revising, remixing, and recreating what they have provided. So if you ever are looking for some resources, please visit our website. And also if you create resources, we invite you to uh, use a Creative Commons license to share your resources with us. We have a new review process, peer review process, where if you submit an activity or um, you know any kind of uh, resource a book or mm -hmm. and whatever here, you offer, yeah, exactly we'd be happy to give you feedback review it and help you improve it and publish it on our website yeah we're very interested in 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 at this point to start having uh, a strong review process for all the materials that we're publishing we believe that Everything is great, but we really want uh, uh, in-depth analysis. And we started with some of the books and some of the materials, and this is a project that is ongoing. And of course, we need reviewers. So if you feel uh, interested in doing this kind of uh, work with us, uh, it will be wonderful if you apply. The same as uh, Joseli was saying, sharing your materials if you have OER uh, resources um, design. Okay, I think we can sharing. go back to the PowerPoint for yeah. because mm -hmm. we are running out of time. Yeah. And these numbers we just were discussing because we we are not very, I mean, we were very focused on exactly how many people are being um, are being involved with us. And we just found out that uh, so far there are more than a thousand five uh, one hundred. Uh, participants that they've been doing different activities through these uh, through the five years that we've been working with with the project. So I, we think that this is a is a good number, and we hope to continue uh, growing it. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. okay. And we have people from all over the country who visit our website and use our resources, and also attend some of our events. We try to hold two, one or two webinars per semester, online webinars where we invite a speaker to share about an expertise re regarding uh, pedagogy or anything related to teaching Spanish as a heritage language. And then Flavia is going to highlight a little bit about our summer workshops, which are our big event every summer. And we think that our summer workshops are really, I mean, the core and the origin of our whole project, because basically we started collaborating. Thank you to the to the possibility of visiting uh, UT Austin on the summer for working with um, heritage uh, teachers. And we had uh, starting in 2015 to 2019, uh, a two day in person workshop. Um, and we started with a small number of participants, as you can see, we had 20, 21 people, and we grew to 65 in 2019, when the pandemic started. So after that, we had two uh, full online workshops in 2020 and 2021 using Zoom, and we had more than 100 participants for the two days. And in this case, the interesting thing was that we receive uh, people from all over the world. We have people connected from Italy, from Spain, from Mexico, from Chile. Uh, so we had a very diverse uh, group of participants attending the, the, the workshops. 
And now we are hoping that if the, all the conditions are given in June this year, we will again restart our in-person uh, workshops. And we're very excited to, to really welcome everybody back back to normal in June 23 and 24 uh, in Austin. And we consider the, the, the summer workshops our, our big event because we feel like in doing these kind of activities, we basically are achieving our goals because we are uh, helping with professional development and doing a strong connection between research and teaching, which is always kind of a divider. So we bring researchers and teachers and we connect. Uh, we really, um, it's an open forum. It's a very social I mean, environment for forging new connections and people start to get involved in small projects and, and, and sharing what they have. Um, we do uh, several sessions has uh, a particular design of OER materials and uh, participants create those materials and also distribute them. So we are having uh, them to create open resources actually and, and publishing them. And uh, also it's important that we are keeping the recordings and the materials that we created for uh, advancing our project on professional development. Okay, future projects, Joseli. <laughs> oh, yes, we have a lot of ideas for future projects. We have a lot of room to grow. Like I said earlier, we wanna recruit new members to grow the coalition at all different levels. And we wanna continue providing professional development opportunities. And we do this through our webinars, workshops, we have the online modules and we uh, something new that we wanna create now is on-site trainings for different school districts in Texas. And we want to apply for funding to develop new projects. We have one in particular that is an idea of creating a reading database where people can come and find readings to support their heritage Spanish classes in all kinds of subjects. So we want to develop that project. We want to research uh, more on classroom practices in the state, what's going on throughout the state for heritage Spanish learners, and to continue promoting the creation and dissemination of OER for heritage Spanish courses at all levels. This is just a few, these are a few of our ideas for the future, but we come up with new ideas and we, we welcome also new ideas on how we can grow. And to finish up then, we want to say that OER is really a fundamental component to achieve educational equity. That's why we are very happy to be a part of CORAL, um, equity, fairness, and opportunity for all. And this can be particularly beneficial for heritage Spanish education in Texas and all over the country. And we feel like there is a great need for this type of partnerships and coalitions throughout the country. And we hope to inspire others to create similar partnerships to collaborate. And so as we continue to grow and to learn, we always welcome your feedback and participation and are happy to answer any questions as well. Thank you. Gracias. Thank you, everyone. And any